Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. And in today's video, we are going to be building the Barbarossa Customs kit version of Laser Light Skeletor. Now, if you've watched my channel recently, you'll have seen that I've restored a couple of Laser Light Skeletors using some uh, reproduction parts from Barbarossa Customs because the two figures I had had damaged arms and damaged legs. And while researching that project and looking for those parts, uh, very kindly, Pete from Barbarossa Customs got in touch with me about making replacement parts. And he also said that one thing he did was he made a kit version of laser light skeletal which I have here so this is uh, basically he's taken all the parts for laser light skeletal and cast them again in modern plastic and you can now take those parts and build your own version of laser light skeletal he's modified a couple of pieces to add a new switch on the back so you don't have to sort of have the little battery pack as it is on the original one and there's a few other sort of minor changes so I will take you through building this kit from scratch and we're going to make our very own version of laser light skeletal at all. First up, let's take a look at all the pieces that you get sent in this pack. As you can see, there's quite a few pieces and you get pretty much everything you need. The only bits that are missing are the battery to run the lights and you don't get the cape. But I've shown in my previous video how to make a cape and I will be using that pattern today. And I suggest that you do the same when you come to make your own one. So these are the pieces. Some of them have been modified, as I mentioned. So I'm going to talk you through those first up. So the pelvis part is the first bit that I've noticed that has been modified. The original laser light skeletal has that cast in a black plastic plastic with the belt being painted on. From Barbarossa Customs you get a version that is in a sort of uh, burgundy type plastic and I guess we're going to be having to paint the bottom part of that black to make it match. Uh, if we look at the battery compartment this has been modified as well. There's a larger hole in the back of it and that is because uh, the custom kit comes with a big switch so you'll be able to switch the light on and off a lot easier than the original one. The original light setup is a little bit weird so um, this I think will be quite an interesting way of doing it. Also the lights that come on the original figure are these things called grain of wheat bulbs and uh, this kit uses LED so we actually have to have a slightly bigger battery. The original battery is a 1.5 volt battery. To run LEDs we need a 3 volt battery which I have on order so I'll cover that when we come to do the wiring of it but that hole on the top there has been modified and because there's a larger hole on the back of that. There's also been a slight modification to the back here that you can see there's a little indent where that switch will be able to fit once we put this all together. So if I slot that in there like so you can see that hole now has a little a sort of indent so that the switch will go neatly in there. I think they've also modified the back of this battery pack. You can see there's a slightly added bit of extra plastic because uh, the way the original setup works is the battery actually holds this pack in place. Uh, so without the battery that uh, bit of plastic is there just to hold everything sort of lined up. But those really are the only sort of modifications. Otherwise the rest of this uh, looks much like the original. It's made out of a similar sort of plastic. Uh, obviously we have to paint everything so that's going to be the first sort of part of the process. We need to paint some copper onto the legs, onto the body, we've got to paint the pelvis and probably the hardest part is we've got to paint his little face here. So uh, let's get started with the painting process. I'm going to start by painting all the copper areas as that's the largest amount of paint that we will have to do. So you can see most of Skeletor's torso on the back is painted this copper colour, there's a lot of detailing on the front and then both his legs. I'm going to be using something called a tool clipper to hold some of the items that I'm painting, especially the legs because they're quite awkward. So what I've done is I put some little clamps on the top of the legs. That means I can then paint these and once I'm done I can insert them into the tool clipper and let them dry. The body isn't going to be such a problem because there's large areas that you can hold like the uh, sort of the arm joint here and then we can just sort of place them flat onto my work surface. So I'm not going to worry too much about sort of clipping those into the clipper but for the legs especially it's very useful. Now I'm using a couple of paints here to get that copper effect. I've got a number 12 which is a humble acrylic which is a really nice coppery colour but I would say it's just that little bit too coppery so I'm going to be mixing that with some Meng colour and this is number MC237. All paints like this are available from different sellers. Uh, each brand makes their own version of these and there are charts online where you can swap between so if you know that you want a humble number 12 there'll be a chart that will tell you what colour that is in Valasia and likewise with the Meng colour so these are just the sort of the ones I have in my little sort of palette of colours but go online you'll be able to find equivalents for what you need. So I'm going to mix these colours up and then paint all of these areas. I'm using my original laser light skeletal here to work out exactly where it needs to be painted but there are plenty of images online if you want to copy those and I'm sure there are some in the instructions from Barbarossa Customs as well for which areas need painting. But let's get these copper areas painted and then we can move on to the pelvis and the more complicated part of painting the face.
The copper colour has gone on really nicely. It will need a second coat so I can see a few patches, but the overall effect is pretty nice and it's very close to the original uh, copper used on these uh, laser light skeletons. This is actually quite a dark one. I have another laser light skeleton which is a little bit lighter like that, which is what I'm going for. So while this is drying, we might as well get on and paint some of the other pieces. As I say, I will put a second coat on this once everything is dry, but uh, that's going to take sort of a half an hour to an hour. So now I'm going to paint the pelvis. I've got some black. Uh, this is Vallejo model colour. This is 70.950. These are all matte paint, so I'm going to uh, paint them on. And then at the end, once everything is dry, I'm going to put a clear coat on top of it. I'm actually going to be using a spray clear coat on this because there's such a large area to cover. Uh, but we might as well get this black painted and then we can work on the face as well. And then once everything's dry, I'll do a second coat on the copper and then uh, we can start constructing everything. But uh, let's uh, get the black put onto this. As I said, on the original uh, laser light skeleton, the pelvis was cast in a black plastic. So you'd have had to paint the belt on. This way around, we have to paint the black part of it, but uh, it will give much the same result. Salt. For Skeletor's face, I'm going to be painting this in a few goes. I'll start with the base green colour, then I'll move on to the sort of highlights in yellow, and then I'll do the black last. I've mixed together a green that I'm pretty happy with, which is using two Vallejo model colours. We've got this olive green, which is 70.967, and then flat yellow, which is 70.953. And these are the same sort of colours I would use actually on a normal sort of standard Skeletor face. I think they will work quite nicely. The painting on this is pretty crude. You can see it's sort of just goes in sort of rough patterns around the edges of his face and likewise the yellow is painted on pretty crudely. So I'll try and copy that as close as I can and we'll get something that looks quite nice. But as I say, this is gonna be a sort of three part paint job. I'll paint the green on, I'll let that dry, I'll paint the yellow on and then I will paint the black on once everything is done. So we'll do the green and uh, that can go in the pile of bits waiting to dry. Now for the yellow, I'm going to be using the exact same colour. So it's going to be the uh, Vallejo flat yellow mixed with a tiny amount of olive green. So it's the other way around and we'll get a slightly greeny yellow and I can sort of recreate the colours that are used on this original skeleton. Again, this is really sort of scruffily painted on. Some of it has worn away. So I'm just going to sort of, you know, make up my own design really, but to try and follow a little bit of what's left on this one. I think I'll be able to get something that looks right, but it's just a sort of messy application of paint. It doesn't seem to have any real definition, but um, we'll go, we'll sort of make it up and see what works.
the last thing we need to do is put the black onto Skeletor's face. The rest of it is looking really quite nice. I'm quite uh, pleased with how that is going. So we're going to be adding some black, which is uh, Vallejo model color 70.950. This is a matte black. And I'm going to be using a very small brush and also a pin for doing some of the really fine details. So this is a pin that I've put into an old brush handle. It means you can put very small amounts of paint onto something. So if you're going to be uh, doing it like a small line, as we have to do here across Skeletor's mouth or in his nose, I can just get a small amount on the, the tip of this pin and apply it like that. So uh, it will enable me to do these quite small details. You can see here on this original Skeletor head that there's just a thin black line for his mouth, small bit in his nose, and then a little bit around the edge of his eyes. So I'll try and do this as close as I possibly can to that. Okay, that's not too bad. I've gone over a bit too much on the green, so I'm going to touch that up again. But the overall effect is quite nice. Often when you're painting something like this, you don't want to go too perfect because the original figures weren't painted particularly well in the first place. They were really sort of rushed through production. So someone would be painting, you know, 50 of these an hour, maybe more. So um, if you go too perfect, it tends to look wrong. So I'm quite happy with how that's going. I am going to just touch up a few little bits, but the overall effect, it does look like Skeletor. All the pieces are now painted and dry and I did do a final top coat using a clear lacquer. You can get various types of clear lacquer from your local model shop. I've just chosen one that I happen to have in stock and a quick coat of that uh, gives everything a nice sort of glossy finish and that's the look I'm going for. And here in front of me now are the pieces all dry and all ready to go. So you can see here this is the copper effect with it's just got a little bit of a sort of gloss finish over the top of it. I think that really just finishes it off and if we look at Skeletor's face now you can see that's nice and shiny that really does look like Skeletor. In fact if I put his eyes in place which is this small plastic piece here I'm just going to slot that in you can see that really makes him look very scary indeed. So I'm really happy with how that has gone. Now before we get onto the wiring there are a few pieces we might as well glue together. One of them is the head as you can see there I've just dropped in the eyes. All we've got to do there is put a little bit of glue around the edge of that and glue that together because we don't need to do anything else with that head. We will be inserting the lights through the hole in the bottom of his neck. So we're going to glue that together. We'll also glue his pelvis together so that the legs are held in place and that is a pretty simple job as well. Just a few bits of glue around the edge of that and that will stick quite nicely. So let's get those done then we can start working on the wiring. For glue I'm going to be using some Gorilla Glue. You can use what you prefer. I find this works particularly well when I'm sort of gluing toys together. So I'm going to put some of that on a little bit of paper and I'm going to use a dotting stick which is something you can pick up quite easily from uh, most model shops to uh, put the glue in place. I don't like squirting the glue straight from the bottle onto the toy because there's chances of making a right mess. If you put a bit of glue onto some paper and then dot it on using a stick like this you have complete control over where it goes. So let's get the glue on the paper and we'll start putting his head and his pelvis together. So with this dotting stick what you've got to do is just get a small amount of the glue on the end of it. As I say you've got to much more control if you do it this way and I can actually then put this exactly where I want the glue to be rather than sort of randomly squeezing it from the tube and it going everywhere. This just gives you a much more control because I only want a few little bits dotted around the edge of this. It doesn't need a huge amount on at all because there's not going to be a great deal of force ever put onto this. Once it's glued together there's not much going to happen to it so we can just push those pieces together, make sure everything is lined up and I'll let that set 
should only take a few seconds really it is super glue but sometimes better to leave it just for a little bit longer there we go so that's the head done we can put that to one side we can now do the same with his pelvis and we can put his legs in place first you can see there's a little notch there and that's where that little post goes in so we put one in there we do the other leg there and now you can see there are three sort of remaining posts on his pelvis so i'm going to put glue on those three and then we'll put the front on and that should glue quite nicely The kit comes with instructions on how to do the wiring and it actually comes with instructions on how to do the wiring without requiring a soldering iron which is really quite nice but for me I want to do it with a soldering iron so I'm going to be soldering all of these wires to the LEDs and to the battery pack uh, properly uh, so it will take a little bit longer and I'm actually going to split this process down into two stages I'm going to do the wiring that goes inside of laser light skeletal and then I'm going to do the wiring that goes inside the battery pack as a separate part so the first thing we've got to do is wire up the two LEDs we have two LEDs here it actually comes with three just in case you uh, lose one so we've got to put one led inside his hand and one led inside his head now with leds they have two legs on them and you can see that one leg is longer than the other the longer leg is the positive and the shorter leg is the negative it's very important to remember that i actually even mark the legs you can see that i've drawn a bit of black on the negative so i know exactly which one is which i'm going to be soldering wires onto both of these legs and i will again mark which one is the positive and i'm going to be doing that just using Using a bit of heat shrink so I'm going to put heat shrink over one of the legs so that I know which is which uh, and then when I've got all the wires together we can put those in the arms I will make sure that I do definitely know which one is which we'll put the wire in the arm so it comes out of there we'll put the other one in the head so it comes out of the bottom of his neck and then we can thread both wires through the back of his body so that we'll know exactly what is what and then we can glue the rest of this figure together and then we can deal with the battery pack and attaching those wires to the battery pack so it's a bit of a sort of two-stage process but I think this will be the easiest way of doing it so the first thing we've got to do is we're supplied with uh, some yellow wires I need to strip the ends of these and put a bit of solder on them and then I'm going to solder these onto this LED here I may trim down the legs because I think the legs are possibly a bit too long certainly for the one that goes inside his arm so we will have two wires off that LED we will do the same on that one I'm going to put a bit of heat shrink over one of the legs uh, so that we know exactly which one is positive uh, but also to stop the chances of these two uh, cables touching together which they shouldn't but it just that extra bit of uh, sort of care and then we can put the figure together it sounds complicated but it really isn't so let's get soldering It only takes a couple of minutes to attach these wires and you can see I've now got a little bit of red heat shrink there on the positive leg of the LED. I've actually also drawn a bit of black on the other end of this cable so that I know that that is the negative because by the time this is hidden inside his head or in his arm I will have forgotten which is which. So I've done that just so I know for future. Uh, we can actually test this as well. This is the type of battery that we are going to be using which is a CR2032 cell. You can pick these up very cheaply. These are three volt batteries. You can see here these are sold by Giracell I think they cost just over a pound and not exactly expensive so this is the one that we're going to be using and I can give this a quick test so if I uh, grab the positive wire and put that onto the positive side of the battery and the negative wire onto the negative side you can see that that LED lights up we can do a little test we'll put that inside his head and you can see that his eyes are glowing quite nicely now we can actually fit these LEDs inside of the figure so for the one in his head it needs to be sort of glued in place uh, so that it doesn't move about I'm actually going to wrap a little bit of uh, insulation tape this black insulation tape around that just to make that a little bit fatter because I think with the insulation tape on I should just be able to push that in and it will stay in place so that doesn't need gluing so I'm just going to quickly put some of this tape on and we'll see if that works this is insulation tape so it's very useful to have you I think you'll see me use it in quite a few different projects on this channel just because it's so useful so I'll take a piece of that 
I'm going to wrap this around the cables here. As you see, instantly I've now not able to see which one is the positive one, which is why it was worth adding a bit of marker pen to the uh, cables there. If I just wrap that around. I just want to make this a little bit thicker so that it just sort of jams in place. I don't see the, any point in actually gluing this in. I think we can sort of jam it in place. That's almost there, just a little bit more and then that will uh, not come out at all. works quite nicely so that should now stay in place. The head on Skeletor doesn't move a lot when you rotate it. There is a little piece of plastic inside the head that stops it turning so you only need to sort of hold that in place a bit loosely. The arm actually turns out to be a lot easier than that. We can just take the LED, push it into his hand like that and then we can put this into the arm and it just sort of wedges in between the little bits of plastic of the arms. So I don't think we're going to need to even glue that. It just seems to sort of squeeze in place. So I'm going to uh, now glue this arm back together. I'm going to use the same method that I showed you for the head. So I've got a bit of super glue here on a piece of paper. I'm going to use my dotter to dot bits of glue all around these little joints. You can see there's five little joints up the arm and we can then glue that piece in place. I might put a few more just around uh, the wrist part just to make sure that that is extra well sort of held together, but I think it should glue quite easily. All of these pieces seem to sit together very nicely. There's not much sort of movement on them. So by the time that's glued in place, that should be a nice and firmly held together. Obviously, you don't want to get any glue on the wrist because the wrist is supposed to be able to rotate. So I'm going to try and avoid getting any glue on that. I just want glue on the sort of edges of this arm piece. We're now ready to put the bulk of Skeletor together before dealing with the wiring in his backpack because we now have his arms with the cables hanging out. We have his head with the cables hanging out and these are marked as I showed you so I know which is positive and which is negative. So the next job is to actually glue him together. So we have the legs here that we've already stuck together and we slot those into the back part of his chest like so. We can then take his head, which has the cables in it, and we push those cables through the back of the body because we know we'll be dealing with those later on. So that can sit there. We then take his arm, and again, we can put the cables through the back of his chest because that is important that they uh, stick out the back and we slot that in place. So he's now got uh, one arm, one head and two legs. We now need to put a little bit of glue on uh, these uh, white tabs on the front part of the chest. So again, I've got my little dotter here. I've got some super glue on this bit of paper. You don't need a huge amount of glue on these. It's really just going to take a little bit to actually glue this body together. The left arm actually holds part of the body together. It uh, constricts the two parts of the torso. So just a small amount of glue on these should be enough to hold it together. So I'm just going to dab a little bit onto those. Chances are you could probably do this without uh, actually gluing it. Some of the original ones I've worked on, I didn't bother gluing them and they hold together really quite nicely. So there we go, just a little bit of glue on those. I can now line this up, make sure everything is in the right place and we'll drop that on. It might take a little bit of sort of wiggling about to get them to line into the holes properly. But I think that is pretty good. Yep, so I'm just going to hold that together while that glue sets and then we'll put his missing left arm on. So I can now put his uh, left arm on. That just is a case of uh, rotating it and sort of pushing it into place on the back here, like so. That does seem to hold in place quite well. Just rearrange that, make sure it's clipped on at the front as well. There we go. So that's his arm in place. He is now looking a lot like Skeletor. In fact, a, a whole lot like Skeletor. I think what we should do though is actually check that these lights work and check that they light up properly. So I've got the cables hanging out the back here. I will bring in one of the batteries and what we've got to do is put the uh, right contacts onto the right side of the battery. So we put the negative onto the front there and we'll put the positive on the back. And you can see there that that is the ones that light up his eyes. 
And then if I take the other cable, which is these ones here, this should light up his hand. So if I push this onto there, and there we go. So his hand lights up. So that is the main part of Skeletor built. Now we need to work on his uh, battery box. Now the kit comes with a battery holder that's much like the original as I showed you except with a bigger hole drilled in the top and that's where this switch is inserted because we're no longer using this battery holder to actually to hold the battery. What we've got to do is attach the wires that we've now got inside of Skeletor to this switch. So we take the positive wires, so the red ones, we'll attach those to one side of the switch. To the other side we are going to attach a red wire just so we know that it is the positive side. And then this wire and the negative wires that are still coming out of the back of the figure I'm going to attach to this which is a battery holder. Now the set doesn't come with this battery holder but I would suggest that you get one because it does make life a whole lot easier. Uh, the instructions that come with the skeletal set uh, show you how to do it without doing soldering but as I said at the start I'd much prefer to do things uh, you know soldering all the wires together. You can buy these battery holders very cheaply on eBay. In fact I think I've managed to get five for a couple of pounds and these hold these little uh, CR2032 batteries so you just have to pop those in there. It means it's just a lot neater once everything goes inside. So I'm going to be using this. So as I say we've got to solder these positive wires to one side of the switch and another wire to the other. Uh, but we've got to uh, sort of do this via the battery compartment because we want everything to be hidden inside. So I've got to thread these wires through uh, so that they come out of the top and then uh, solder them on there and then push the red wire back down and then we'll solder these two on here. A lot of this does sound quite complicated but really it's not. It's a very basic circuit. You're basically got a positive and a negative wire and you're putting a switch on the positive wire. So you basically break the wire and that switch goes in between so you can now switch the battery on and off. It's a fairly simple circuit. So there you can see the switch is now soldered in place. So basically I've got the positive wire going to one contact on that and then this red wire coming back. So we now have, this is the positive wires. These are the two negative wires out of the back of the figure. And we need to solder those onto the battery holder. So we have uh, two positive uh, connectors on this battery holder. So I'm just going to solder it onto one of those. I'll put the red onto the top one there and then we solder the black ones onto the bottom there. And then when we put the battery in and switch the switch, we will get a complete circuit. So uh, let's get these two soldered in. I'm going to trim this wire down because I don't need the wires particularly long. I think about that long should be long enough. So I'll just trim the end of that off and let's get these soldered onto the battery holder.
well there you go that is now all soldered in it's uh, one of those things once you've done these sort of bits of wiring a few times it is pretty straightforward how to do it as I say the kit comes with instructions on how to do this without soldering I just wanted to do this a little bit neater and I think by adding this little battery holder it really has neatened things up a lot and it makes it very easy to change the battery so let's test that this works so here is the little battery we'll put this in so you can see there's a little positive mark on the battery holder so we put this round the right way and if I press this switch on the top the light should light up which they do and because this is a switch that switches on and off you can hear it clicks on and clicks off so we can have the lights on and the lights off really very easy that's actually a much better setup than the original figure on the original figure you have to push down the battery pack to make the lights come on and when you let go they go off straight away so that does work a lot better now all of this should be able to be sort of pushed inside the back of the figure there's quite a lot of space in the chest i forgot to mention at the start of the video that uh, there's a big bit cut away from the back there you can see that sort of uh, hooped section there with a curved top that's actually been cut away to make space for all sort of batteries and bits in the back of this so uh, there is plenty of space in here it's just a case of sort of organizing this so that everything is sort of turned around the right way i'm going to use a pair of tweezers because my battery is now slightly bigger because of the battery holder there we go and now we can push this in i think everything should sit quite happily in there which it does very good that's all hidden away and it should still work if i press the button it does very nice indeed now the last thing laser light skeleton needs is a cape and as i mentioned at the start of this video i have another couple of videos that show me restoring some vintage laser light skeletons and in that i make a cape from scratch i'll be putting the links to those videos in the description so follow that process download the pattern from toyploy.com and you'll be able to make your own cape and you'll end up with something that looks like this so let's put the cape onto the figure and get him completed as you can see it does make quite a big difference by putting the cape on him it just makes him look so much more like skeletal now we just need to put the staff in his hand like that and then we can light him up so let's switch those lights on there he is in all his glory laser light skeletal with glowing eyes and glowing hand but let's compare this to an original laser light skeletal so we can see how well the uh, kit holds up against that so here we have a selection of laser light skeletons. The two on the left are originals that I have repaired. So they do have a couple of uh, reproduction pieces on them, but overall those are original. And this is the new one that I have made on the right. As you can see, it really does look the part. It's probably too pristine, if anything. Uh, the paint is lovely and shiny. There's no scratches on it. The other laser light skeletons I have have a bit of wear and a bit of yellowing. And as I showed you, some of the paint is worn on the faces. So this one is almost too minty, but uh, it really does look the part. Uh, it's quite Quite easy to spot that this is a reproduction for those that are worried because obviously the pelvis has been painted rather than being cast in uh, burgundy plastic and on the back of it we have this big switch so you can clearly see that that is a reproduction version of the figure but it's been great fun making it. I've thoroughly enjoyed working on this kit it's been really nice to go through the process of constructing the figure from the ground up taking all the pieces painting them finishing them adding the electronics and putting it all together I've really enjoyed the whole process so I do need to say a massive thank you to Barbara Barbarossa Customs for sending this over. It's been a great fun project to work on. I would like to mention that uh, some of the plastics used, especially on the arm and the body, are a little bit softer than the original ones. If you've ever dealt with an original laser light skeletal, the body is made out of quite a solid plastic, and the plastics that have been used on the body of the kit are a little bit soft and a little bit flexible, which does actually make it quite easy to work with. You don't have to worry about breaking anything because it does have that little bit of flex to it. But the overall effect is really impressive, and I'm going to be putting this with the rest of my sort of skeletal army uh, so if you want to get this kit for yourself then do check out Barbarossa Customs website I'll put a link to that in the description he sells a whole load of uh, reproduction parts and also custom pieces for uh, a wide range of Masters of the Universe figures so check out the whole site uh, if you've enjoyed this video then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video and thanks for watching Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.